so unique as the one that climbs the steep slopes of Pikes Peak near Colorado Springs. Since 1891, these strange little engines and these miniature coaches of the Pikes Peak Cog Railway have transported 675,000 people to the summit of the lofty mountain. In all the world, there are only three similar roads, and they are in the heart of the Swiss Alps. Over the nine miles of main track, four little trains each make two daily trips to the summit and return. The summit station is more than two and one half miles above sea level, and in some places along the route, the grade exceeds 25%. The tiny locomotive weighs only 32 tons, but develops 25,000 pounds of tractive force power with which to push the coaches up the steep slopes. Each train consists of only one car and the engine. The center of the track is equipped with a cog rail which fits into a driving gear beneath the engine and assures a safe means of locomotion. The coach is not attached to the engine, it is pushed up and on the downward trip, the locomotive serves to halt a too hasty descent of the car. As we ride along, we realize that once again, men and steel have triumphed over nature. And we wonder what new fields of conquest will open to skill and might and iron. Only a few years ago, this land was a wilderness of mountains and plains. But today, thanks to the foresight of hardy pioneers, Colorado has become a great state that offers a wealth of beauty to its guests. A beauty that has been inaccessible until man made possible the ways to see it. From the slopes of Pikes Peak flows a great city's water supply and beautiful Lake Moraine stores millions and millions of gallons of pure melted snow water. With the approach of summer, the road must be cleared of snow so that the road bed may be inspected and minor repairs and improvements made. For though the Pikes Peak Cog Road is not operated the entire year, it receives the same care and attention as a major railroad. The snowplow plunges into the giant drifts, which in some places are more than 30 feet deep, a colossal mole boring into a mountain of ice. The winters are harsh above timberline and icy gales work for months to drive the snow into huge banks on every unsheltered slope of the mountain. Here Jack Frost makes his last defiant stand against the onslaught of summer and warm winds. Winter dies hard on Pikes Peak. With the roadbed cleared of snow, it is only a few days until the first passenger train makes the maiden trip of the year. When people in the valley are dressed in summer attire, the peak still presents a picture of winter. Although a great deal of snow has melted, some high drifts remain until midsummer, and the train proceeds cautiously around the curves, where the banks of ice are higher than the train itself, and a cave-in would mean that the train crew would have to man shovels to clear the track. While the engineer oils his engine and replenishes the water supply, the passengers leave the coach to have a snow fight. A good snowball fight is great in winter, but it's greater in summer when the lower world feels the effects of a rising thermometer. It is a strange sight to see snowballs flying in the middle of June, when in other places the population is devising means to keep cool. No ice packs for these maids with rosy cheeks. They'll take theirs nature's way, and the more snow they get thrown at them, the better they like it. As we reach the summit after a journey made in complete comfort, we cannot help but think of General Zebulon Pike, the discoverer of the peak, and his little handful of foot-weary soldiers who long ago stood at the foot of the mountain and said that man would never set foot upon the top. General Pike turned his back on the mountains, firm in his belief that this giant of the Rockies would defy all efforts of man to reach its summit. But man, on his march of progress, not only conquered the peak, but has made the ascent possible for all. Our hands grow cold as the temperature hovers around zero, 
But we grind on for the day is clear and clouds below us will make a beautiful picture to say nothing of the ladies. As we leave the summit, we reflect that our day spent in curious Colorado has been complete except for one thing, an interview with the man who has caused these things to become realities, the man who has made his own dreams come true. Meet Spencer Penrose, who as a young man sought his fortune in the gold fields of Cripple Creek, Colorado. Colorado gave up much of its precious yellow metal to this man, but he saw another wealth in the great state, a wealth that cannot be counted in dollars and cents. A lover of the outdoors and of animals, Mr. Penrose wanted the world to see the beauties that were his to see every day. And so he built most of the attractions that are to be found in the Pikes Peak region so that his fellow men might take advantage of the beauties of nature. So farewell to Colorado, a curious, colorful state.